I've made 116 videos, I've had 30,000 views, and I just hit 500 subscribers. So it's a celebration of this. I'm gonna be making this video on how I make these videos and what I use to make them. So I'm gonna be breaking this down from pre-production, which is basically my typewriter, to production, which is my cameras, and then post-production, which is basically all my audio stuff. So starting with pre-production with my typewriter is how I come up with my ideas. And I usually do this either when I'm in bed falling asleep because there's zero distractions or when I'm at work because my job is basically doing the same thing every night. And because of that, it's sort of muscle memory and my mind is free to wander. So I come up with a lot of ideas when I'm working at my job. And I sort of filter out the ideas to what is most interesting. So I sort of vet them and filter them. And then I, once I have one that I think will be interesting, I think about what the beginning will be like and then what the ending will be like. And I head toward the typewriter and I just sort of bang it out from here to on paper through writing. I used to write all my films on a notebook, handwritten. And I did that for a long time. I started doing that in 2022 when I started making these videos. Then I sort of graduated to a typewriter because it just was a little bit easier than writing with a notebook. But it was still a direct flow from idea to paper. And my first typewriter was an electric one. And then I went to a Royal typewriter. But then that one was kind of slow. So then I graduate into a better royal typewriter which is what i have now so for production i have two cameras right now and my main studio camera the one that doesn't really leave my studio my house is the canon c200 this is sort of my cinema camera and i mainly got this because of dig the short film i made this summer and i wanted something that was gonna have really good image quality it was the first camera that i started color grading and shout out to aton if you're watching this he's the one who taught me how to do that i'm still sort of an idiot when it comes to color grading but i'm definitely getting there. My first camera that I ever used and I started filming in 2017 was a cheap Chinese camcorder. But after that, I sort of realized that my phone was better quality than that camcorder and I started using that. And after that, I got a Nikon B500. Then after that, I saved up and got a Canon 90D. And in between those, I had a GoPro Hero 7, which I broke with a weed whacker. And then after my Canon 90D, I sold that and got a Nikon Z30, which I still use now. It's one of my most favorite cameras. I like that camera even more than the C200 just because of the way it looks and the easeability of it. This is the image and sound from the Nikon Z30. This is my favorite camera, even more favorite than the C200, which is a far superior camera, but this is way easier to use. And I just like the picture. And before my C200, the cinema camera I had before that was a C100, and I loved that camera, but I just didn't, I couldn't do everything I wanted to do with it. For lenses, which I use with my cinema camera, I used to only use vintage lenses because of the look of it and how cheap they were, but I slowly realized that they're way more harder to use than modern lenses or cinema lenses made for this camera. I still prefer the look of vintage lenses on this camera rather than the modern cinema lenses, although I use those more. For audio during production, I mainly use this guy here, um, the Sennheiser MKE, MKE 600, and then for my Nikon Z30, I use a Rode VideoMic Video Mic Go 2, I think it's called. This guy is pretty good. I shot my whole dig film on this and did a great job. I also use this for post-production with voiceovers and it does an okay job with that. So I forgot to mention that I have two pieces of homemade filmmaking equipment. And the first one is this overhead shooting rig. And this is actually the second iteration of this rig. And the first one, I made it with cheaper wood that chipped a lot. And also it was a lot shorter. And I also improved like this little plate here, which I basically put my camera on the other side with these thumb bolts. And the other piece of homemade filmmaking equipment is a dolly that I made a while back, but I rarely ever use that thing. I, I probably used it 
twice since I made it two years ago, I think. Um, but this overhead camera rig I use a lot. And it, the great thing about it is that I made it customizable to my desk that I use it on. So it's perfectly made for that. So transitioning to post-production, I've now started to make my own music and sound effects for my film, which is a lot harder to do. But because of copyright issues, I don't really use already made music anymore. And another reason why I don't use it anymore is because it's hard to find music that perfectly fits what I'm trying to make. And like this, the sort of feeling that I'm trying to give off from my films, it's hard to find music that fits that perfectly. So in the beginning of this year, I started making my own music with a stylophone. And it's sort of like a synthesizer with a little pen and you press down. And the thing's been great and I use it a lot and I still use it, but it was very limited and it's only that one sound. Just a couple days ago, I upgraded to an Akai MPK Mini Play, and it's just a little keyboard with a bunch of sounds on it, and I've been using that a lot more for the post-production side where I'm making my own music. For recording, like I said, I use this for voiceovers, the Sennheiser mic, and then I use a Scarlett Solo for like an audio interface. Where I bring everything in into DaVinci Resolve. That's the editor I use to make videos. For the computer that I use, it's a laptop. It's the Lenovo Slim Pro 7, which my dad got for me. Thank you, dad. Good thing's great. I use DaVinci Resolve on there. I'm, I don't really do complex editing at all because I think it's kind of cheesy. So I really try to make simple edits and simple cuts to make it easier to digest. So, I, and I'm definitely also an idiot when it comes to editing, but I try to just bring everything in and just cut it the way I like it. And then try to make music, simple music, just kind of playing around with sounds, put that in and just bring it all together. But in my opinion, it all stems from pre-production when I'm writing this film, I'm coming up with the ideas either at work or at night. And like that saying, you can't build a bridge until you know what's on the other side. That's definitely pre-production. I need to have a big idea of what I'm making and then I can make it. And there's been a couple of films where I made where I didn't really know what was on the other side of the project for lack of a better term. And it just didn't work out. There's been a few of those where because I didn't know what was on the other side, I was just sort of filming, but I didn't know what I was filming, what it was gonna turn into, if that makes sense. So that's sort of the golden rule that I follow is I need to know what the big picture is, what the idea is and why I'm doing it then I could do the sort of how I'm going to do it. So I hope this video explains to you at least somewhat what I use to make these videos and how I do it. In no way, shape, or term am I an uh, expert on any of these things, although I've been doing it for a while. doesn't mean I'm an expert and I'm still learning every single time I make these videos. In the description of every video I post, it's a list of all the equipment I use if you wanted more specifics. It's all listed there. I actually recently just updated it because the list I was using before was a little outdated. So in case you wanted specifics on every single piece, including like down to every lens I use and each microphone, it's all there in case you were wondering. And I'm also going to put the link to my short film Dig in case you haven't watched it. I put a lot of effort into that and my actors are great. I made it this summer and that's what I got the C200 for and that microphone. So go ahead and watch that if you haven't already.